Okay, welcome everyone to DEXMA Day 2019. Uh, sorry for starting a few minutes late. We just had to wake a few people up from their siesta here in Barcelona. Um, so to start off today, we just wanted to introduce, uh, my name is Mio, I'm going to be your moderator for today. I am one of the account executives here at DEXMA and you probably will have heard from me at some point or other. Um, DEXMA Day is a day that we usually do once per year. Uh, it introduces all of the things that we've done in the previous year and a little bit about what we're going to do in the future. Normally we've had this only closed for partners, but this year we decided to open it up to everybody as well. So uh, to introduce a little bit about what you're going to hear today, first up we're going to have Joan Pignol and Guillaume Corominas. Hi everyone. Are They're our amazing yeah, co-founders and CEO and CTO of Dexma. Uh, following them, we're going to see a bit about the platform from our product director and product owner, Danielle and Alfonso. Here you'll see a real hands-on demo, no fake stuff, it's all real, so we're all hoping that it goes very well. Um, following this, you'll hear a little bit from me again, uh, as well as Chabi Novella, who's our operations director, to hear about how you can start working with Dexma, what it's like to be a partner, um, and how you can get involved. I'm sure you'll want to do that once you've seen all the great stuff that our product team shows you from the platform. And throughout all of that, please feel free to use the Q&A box. Uh, it's situated on the right hand side in the GoToWebinar screen. Um, type in all of the questions that you have for us and we've allotted about 15 minutes at the end to be able to answer all of the things that you have. So I don't see a reason why we shouldn't get started. I'm going to hand over now to Joanne and Guillaume. Thank you very much, Mio. Thanks everyone for connecting today with us. Mm -hmm. How are you, Guillem? Very good. Very willing to to present you many things today. <laughs> That's good, good. Good. We are uh, we're also showing our video at the moment, but we're just going to turn it off and on at the side of each presentation, so you can put a name to a face and so forth. But we're going to turn it off during the presentation so that you can concentrate on our slides. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Mio. So maybe we should go back to the to the slide that we have prepared. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for those uh, who do not know me, uh, I'm Joan Pignol, one of the founders of the company and its current CEO. Uh, for those who already connected to one of our sessions, uh, we've been running these sessions for the last seven years, I would say. Uh, at the beginning, we started doing uh, the partner days that we were calling. As you saw this year, we have called it Dexma Day uh, because we're opening. Uh, we, we have opened the, the event, let's say. And uh, so just for these first 20 minutes, Guillaume and myself, we would like to share uh, the trends that we're seeing in the market, not only based on technology, but as well the market. So that's why I wanted to start this year uh, sharing this, uh, this graph with you. I don't know if you saw this picture, but it was uh, a few weeks ago uh, the, in The Economist, you could see it and as well in different uh, newspapers all over the world. So this is the evolution of, uh, of the temperatures in the world for the last 130 years. And uh, the, the white bars are, is the average of the temperature of the world between, between uh, 1970 and 2000. Okay, so the white bar would be like the neutral uh, year, so the, the average uh, temperature of that year. And as you can see, for the last two decades, it's getting more and more red. So this means that the average temperature of the world is getting warmer, okay? So we wanted to share this with you because there is a, a huge trend. We're seeing it more and more into newspapers, into the public opinion that uh, it's, it's, it's a real problem, of course, that we have in the world. And of course, a lot of people is concerned about it. In this, web, in this website, of course, you can as well analyze each of your countries. And I've done myself the, 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 the try to do it in, the, in different countries. And, and I can tell you that all of them are getting red. Good. So I, as I was saying, uh, of course, as well, we we're seeing big movements uh, in the population, especially on in in the youth. Uh, the climates for well, Fridays for Future. It's called the movement that it was striking in more than 100 countries. Uh, very very relevant, of course, and this happened during the last 12 months, or as or at, at least we've seen uh, a huge rise in that. 
And as well, we're seeing uh, the media um, focusing on those uh, who are polluting the most. Okay, so this is one article that appeared uh, in the in the Guardian a few weeks ago as well, where they were talking about 20 firms uh, that could be behind a third of all carbon emissions of all time in the world. As well, we're seeing, of course, uh, companies who really don't care maybe about climate change, but then we're seeing that it's the, their inside teams and their inside workers who are taking action. And here you can see a very fun example that happened in, in Amazon. Uh, I invite you as well to read about this article. It's not only uh, the it's not only Amazon or other companies. Here, for example, you can see one of the biggest uh, European companies and its biggest producer of carbon uh, emissions, who as well is claiming uh, that it's going to become carbon neutral by 2040. This is a huge trend that we see thanks to uh, United Nations, where a lot of companies, I think. Close more than 15,000 companies they have pledged uh, that they want to become carbon neutral by 2040, 2050. Okay, so this is really good news for all of those that were working in energy efficiency and energy management, because all these companies they need to start measuring their energy consumption, productions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I don't want to take much more of your time, uh, but as well, of course, it's not only into the energy companies, but as well, uh, fashion retailers like Gucci uh, getting into the media to claim that they are going, they want to become uh, carbon neutral. So uh, as well, of course, so in the United Nations, there might be some uh, disputes about if all the countries agree on the targets uh, of the climate change. But as well, we see the, ra the rise of uh, cities getting together. So this is uh, this press release. It's an example about 94, 94 mega cities getting together to fight uh, climate change. This was a first, uh, a very brief review about the market, the market trends that we've seen here at Dexma. And uh, of course, before uh, giving uh, the command to Guillem, I just wanted to share for those who still don't know our company. So our mission as a company at Dexma, is to help people and organizations to understand and optimize their energy use. We've been doing this for the last 13 years since Guillem and myself, uh, we started this company and we will keep doing it for the next many coming years. OK, as we always say at Dexma, we do one building at a time or one industry. And so far, as you will see in our presentation, it's been, uh, well, tens of thousands of buildings and industries that we have already managed. Thank you very much again, all of you. And now it's time for Guillem. Thanks, John. Yeah, uh, my my idea here in this in this presentation is to give you uh, a technical uh, overview of how the the SaaS uh, industry, the software as a service industry, is making changes, very disrupting changes in most of the markets and also the energy management uh, market. Uh, we will review this as uh, four main trends that uh, we think that that will be very, very uh, disrupting during these years and that we have already started working it since some years ago uh, because it will make really very uh, big changes to, to how we use the software nowadays. The first, the first one is uh, proactivity. Uh, we've seen during the, the, during the latest years that uh, several studies mentioned that data that is being collected is not being analyzed. Uh, they talk about 0.5% uh, of data being analyzed. And this is worrying given that in the coming years, we'll have more and more data coming in. There's uh, perspectives of having billions of devices from coming from the IoT, representing uh, lots of data streams that will be useful uh, to analyze the consumption in the buildings, and that will need to be analyzed in some different way. How we've done it until today, it's by doing more passive uh, um, analysis of the data, platforms that let you uh, manage the data, 
but the future comes to uh, having proactive system that give you notifications based on uh, artificial in intelligence. The second one is elasticity. This one, uh, this is a, a small schema of, of what our platform is. Uh, for the ones of you who have already worked with, with our platform, you've probably seen the, the red box, sorry, the, the green box, which is uh, uh, Dexma. Uh, it's a web interface where the customers uh, log in. And for the more technical people that, that are listening here, uh, they've probably have had interactions with the integrations and that acquisition APIs. Uh, but this is just the, the, the most outer part. If we take a look of what's inside here, we see uh, dozens of components that, that all together work uh, in an elastic way. Uh, all of them can be uh, scaled uh, or reduced depending on the load. And this is the basis of uh, having a, an, an infrastructure ready to accept billions of devices. The third one is the ease of customization. We've seen in this industry that we started with SCADAs, which were installed on-premise that were customized 100%, uh, but it was not possible to have it without customization. There were systems that uh, they did not do much uh, by themselves and required lots of effort customizing them, meaning lots of man hours uh, dedicated to uh, creating uh, user interfaces and workflows to work. This uh, is, is not useful in, in long term because it's expensive both to create and to maintain and it's slow to, to evolve. Then we, we moved to uh, cloud solutions and some of them were, were with APIs, but many of them do not have APIs or other ways to uh, interact with them. So they end up being like boxes uh, locked uh, with information and which is not easily to access by, by others or to share with other procedures. So where we see the, the tendencies, and we've seen it in many, many verticals from e-commerce to uh, CRMs or many other uh, markets, is the app markets. It's not only providing a way to, to access the data, but also a platform to create new applications which have some features that may be unique to some of the customers and that even the, the, the platform manager does not even have to know about them. They are fully independent in developing new features and creating your roadmap in your application. And the last one is the facility to integrate. You cannot integrate with a platform if it's not open at first. So one of the, the first pillars of, of this trend is that the platform allows you to both manually and automatically get the data out of the platform and also in if, if possible. APIs are, are the, the second step. Once you have an open platform, you can have an API that exposes that automatically and uh, has the ability to interact with other platforms, such as, for example, single sign-on or other kinds of uh, platforms that are used in other verticals that all together have a, 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 a better value proposition chain in order to every platform do their, their own um, their own business the best way possible. Now, Joan will, will tell you about some other interesting facts of Dexma. Sure. Thank you, Guillem. Uh, so just wanted as well to remind everyone uh, the paper of the international analysts. So uh, recently, Dexma has been recognized as one of the one of the most, well, or the top 30 companies in our space, so building energy management uh, systems. Uh, here you can see Frost and Sullivan, which is an international analyst, uh, highlighting Dexma among other important players in the sector. Uh, we're happy here to be among all these uh, companies uh, because not because maybe we're one of the smaller companies in the list uh, among very, very large and big players, but uh, because we are very, very focused just doing this energy management software in the cloud, as Guillaume was telling us uh, with these fourth uh, trends. 
this is important to highlight for all our partners and customers because of course uh, a lot of big players and a lot of big companies when doing uh, when choosing an EMS or an energy management systems they rely on these uh, on these analysts and this uh, research good uh, just as well uh, usually we share uh, some stats about our company uh, so in the last in the last 12 months we have surpassed 3000 and customers served of course all these customers are not being served directly from dexma but thanks to our network uh, of international and national partners close to 350 companies who are managing more than 80,000 locations. So this means that in all these locations, we have hardware in place that is collecting real-time data. Well, our partners. Uh, our biggest partner deployment has surpassed 10,000 locations. This is very, very important because as, as you have seen, we're a bit in, in an early stage in the energy management industry. So there are still tons of buildings, hundreds of thousands, millions of buildings who are going to be retrofitted uh, in the next coming years. And Dexma, of course, has to provide a solution that scales to, this, uh, to these KPIs. At the end as well, uh, we like to highlight because Guillem and myself, we, are, we could say that we are cloud lovers because this is how the, the company started. And uh, so thanks to this cloud uh, infrastructure, we were able uh, to release this year more than 80 versions of the software. Of course, for those who still love on-premise, uh, you cannot do 82 updates in one year. No, if you ask your IT department to update so many times the, a software that you're using, you'll probably get a, a bad response. And the, and the idea, of course, it's not to stay in 82, but we're seeing more and more that this is getting faster than that, okay? So this is, of course, one of the huge benefits of the cloud that we can upgrade, we can resolve bugs, we can do it at the moment, and we fix it for everyone. So I think that this is very important. And just to finish uh, our part, Guillaume and myself, we wanted to share uh, some business uh, updates and as well product and team. So this year, our company expects to, uh, to close with twice the revenue that we had last year. As we said, we surpassed the 300 partners mark in 45 countries. Uh, as well, very, very relevant that we have started signing uh, global players into our partner uh, community. So this means uh, partners who really are doing pan-European or global projects, so in different countries. As well, in the north of Europe, Dexma has created uh, its first branch called Dexma Nordics uh, to serve Sweden, Norway, and Finland. Well, we have uh, two colleagues already working there. And then in terms of product, uh, now, of course, will be the time from, uh, from Daniel Uches and, and Alfonso from product. And they will be unveiling a lot of things that they didn't let us to explain to yourself. So if, you, if you've been in some of the events, you will know that even if Guillermo and myself, we founded the company, we're not led to share any product <laughs> update. They always uh, keep the best part for them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you have to stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, the, the Dexma new brand, of course, and the new logo. Uh, you've seen that we changed a few weeks ago our brand and our logo. Uh, it will be as well our product colleagues who will introduce uh, why we did this change and what is it behind. And that's it. So the company, uh, we reached uh, a few weeks ago 45 employees, but of course we're seeing that uh, we're going to keep growing. Again, uh, thank you very much to everyone for having us this afternoon. And I think we move to the last slide. Of course, enjoy. And now we're going to pass the microphone again to uh, Mio. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joan and Guillaume. That was a great presentation. And as you guys can see here, we certainly like to have fun at Dexma. Um, so we hope you do today with us as well. 
Um, just a quick note that I forgot to mention at the start uh, was that we will be, well, we are at the moment recording this and we will make this recording available to everyone who signed up for the webinar. We'll probably send that in a couple of days to you once we've processed the file and so forth. Uh, so keep that in mind, no need to take lots of notes and all of your colleagues who couldn't join today, we're more than happy um, to share the recording with you later. Okay, so um, I think it's time to introduce our next speakers. Uh, firstly, we will have <laughs> um, Danny. Uh, Danny Uches is our product director. He was actually the third uh, ever employee of Dexma after Joanne and Guillaume. Uh, so uh, he will be talking to us about the product. Uh, and then we also have Alfonso Mateos, who you may know in a previous life from our customer support team, but now he's moved into product and he'll be showing us a little bit about Dexma Analyze as well. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm going to pass on to Danny and Alfonso, and you may even hear a little bit from me during this presentation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So thanks, Mio, for for uh, inviting us to this to this event. Um, this is the fourth event that we do, and it's the only one that we do in English. So thanks for you guys that are connected there. Uh, Alfonso and me, we are the product guys at this company. So we will try to explain you as much as we can and as, as good as we can what we've been doing during this year, and of course, uh, what is our product about, right? So what do we try to solve for, for the energy efficiency uh, world, okay? So let's start. Uh, we say that Dexma is a unique platform, and why is that? Why, why is that we are saying that? Because we believe that it's the unique platform in the market that helps you to move from zero to 100 in the energy efficiency journey okay and we do so using the three modules that are available into our platform that they are detect analyze and control so when you start the project you don't have too much data to work with you are still deciding if you should invest on that project or not you can use the detect module to evaluate how much savings, how many savings a prospect, customer, potential project could have, okay? Then if the detect, uh, let's say the detect potential savings are far enough, are correct, are in a, in a good level, then you maybe decide to start developing or analyzing uh, your prospect, your project by deploying hardware in real time. So that's why we have created Dexma Analyze. For the partners that are connected today, this is Dexel Energy Manager that we have renaming it as Dexma Analyze. And then, of course, you end up the project with controlling loads, right? So once you have analyzed, you have invested in energy efficiency recommendations and retrofit, you have verified those savings, but you have the building that it's not behaving as, as you want, as it should be expected, then you can install more hardware and then end up controlling your loads okay so this is the whole journey that you can do with the dexma platform step one detect step two analyze and step three control and now me i think that it would be great to explain a bit of what's exactly solving each of the products absolutely absolutely danny so which are the questions that is trying to answer dexma detect for instance once you have a portfolio and at the very beginning of your project, let's, let's suppose that we're at the day zero and we only have monthly consumptions that come from the invoices or maybe some hourly consumptions that we have gathered from the fiscal meter. Uh, we run the detect algorithms and detect tells us which are the ones that we should be investing on during the first phase, right? then it gives you as well a virtual disaggregation. And this is a technology that we have developed here at Dexma. It's called NILM, NILM, that comes from non-intrusive load monitoring. And this is basically telling you, Mio, uh, for a given building, which is the amount of energy that that's consuming potentially in HVC or lighting or refrigeration is if we are a supermarket, right? So from your desks, from your office, you can start making decisions on if it would be better to invest one euro or one pound in an HVC retrofit or maybe into the lighting system without even having to go there. And then, of course, we have the recommendation. So Dexma Detect simulates with a recommendations catalog 
a number of different recommendations per each side, and it's giving you financial metrics to help you take better, better decisions. Then if we move forward into this journey, into the Dexma journey, then you have the analyze part. Once you have said, okay, it's fine, so there is potential into that customer. I want to move forward with it. So let's start investing in monitoring. Um, and of course, verifying the savings. So we cannot understand a project that you are investing a euro or a pound and you are not verifying it in real time how much savings you are getting, okay? And those are the kind of problems that Dexma Analyze is solving for the energy managers. So this is like the next step after Dexma Detect, right? So Correct. it's to prove that these savings that we suggested that you make are actually making a difference to your customer and that your customer should come back to you again for your next project. Exactly, okay. exactly. So that's the point. You start by Dexma Detect and then the next natural point is going to Dexma Analyze. Mm -hmm. And it helps you to save as a team, right? Because we've been talking that uh, people needs to be empowered and, and needs to have access to information. And in Dexma Analyze, we have created a sort of features that facilitate that kind of team working, right? So everyone has the information and everyone can help you into these energy efficiency projects. And then the third step, Mio, would be control, right? So uh, this is a part that we're still under analyzing it, uh, but the main pillars, the main, the main focus areas that we are analyzing is that we want to provide an on-demand control, schedules and conditional. So you can, set, let's say you can put buildings on the holidays mode if necessary. And of course the multi-site integrated control. So instead of going one by one, BMS by BMS, trying to configure it manually, to their web servers. We want to have this abstraction layer where you can continuously uh, modify the, the schedules of the buildings. Okay, fantastic. So now you've showed us what Dexma can do with our platform. What differentiates us from everybody else? Exactly. The first key point, I think that it's data sources, right? So we are totally hardware agnostic. Uh, we were one of that pioneers, you know, Mio, back in like, let's say Back 10 years ages. ago, exactly. <laughs> 10 years ago, we started to bet into that way because uh, normally the EMS platforms were re very related with the hardware manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, but Dexma, let's say that break it that wall mm -hmm. and, and we started to be more open. integrable, yes. open. In, okay. Exactly. And this is a huge differentiator. Mm -hmm. And we still have that that vision, right? So you, our, our customers can use whatever hardware they prefer yeah. in terms of cost, of being easier to, mm -hmm. to deploy, mm -hmm. in terms of brand. Especially being a global platform, some manufacturers more prominent in North America and Europe, in Asia Pacific and so forth as well. Correct, correct. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Then of course, we need to understand the new trend on data lakes, okay? Mm -hmm. There is more and more companies that they have started to create their own databases, big databases. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Dexma directly integrates with that data lake. Yeah. Okay. And this is another differentiator. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the rising of the IoT protocols that later on Alfonso will speak more about that. But we have started to integrate hardware that sends through Sigfox, LoRa, MQDD protocols. Great. Okay. The next key differentiator from Dexma versus other other software manufacturers be, for instance, the API and the apps market. I think that Guillaume explained a bit on that, but I, I was I was counting how many apps do we have already in the apps market, and it's 33 available for everyone. Wow. Okay. This is solving specific problems, but the cool thing is that I've I've counted how many of them were not public, <laughs> and this is crazy because there are close to 300 different apps that we have never seen, mm -hmm. that our customers have created by themselves to mm -hmm. solve specific problems. Yeah, great. That's thanks great. to the API. Yeah. So we have a high performance API, very quick, very fast, very easy to use, that is allowing all of that customers to solve their specific problems. In fact, you know, Mio, they are creating their own roadmaps. Exactly. They're not tied exactly to ours either, which means they're more independent exactly. and using our platform for their own uses. It's great. 
Exactly. And because when, when I go to Joan and Guillem trying to hire more people and they say, well, you know, Danny, this is not the right time. <laughs> yeah. So you can create your own roadmap mm -hmm. on top of the platform yeah. because we yeah. can't build just everything. Everything. Because that would raise prices for our customers. <laughs> and we would hate that too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and the last one, Mimi, I, I would like to mention the artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. but not as a, as, as a hype concept you know because last year we have explained a lot about technology and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. this year i wanted to narrow down to three very specific problems that we solve thanks to the artificial intelligence mm -hmm. the first one it's the video that you are looking at here uh, this is a cloud of points right this is what we are doing behind the scenes in the dex meditech when we say that dex meditech is actually comparing you versus your peers this is a 36 dimension mathematical problem. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, this mm -hmm. is a very, very difficult problem to solve for humans. Mm -hmm. So we use artificial intelligence methods to simplify those 36 dimensions to just three. Mm -hmm. And then using other algorithms, when we click into just single one point, the machine gives us the closer, the, the 100 peers, let's say, mm -hmm. or the number that we wanna show, mm -hmm. right? and it's comparing to their profile, their consumption, and other meta information that we have. So this is a use case that we are doing using artificial intelligence. Yeah, great. But we have another one. We have the NI, N, NILM, non-intrusive load monitoring, that is helping us to disaggregate our consumption without hardware in place. This is so cool. It's giving us a lot of accuracy so, and this is a technology that we are using to reduce friction into the x tag. And as well, the automatic anomaly detection, as Guillem said before, only 0.5% of the data is being analyzed, actually. Uh, yep. And so, how can we help our, our partners process that more efficiently? Being, being proactive, I mean, humans couldn't uh, analyze all of this information. Mm -hmm. So let's develop some algorithms, some bots, some, some artificial intelligence, in fact, that continuously tries to detect things and tell you, mm -hmm. hey, Mio, mm -hmm. we have that problem here and here and mm -hmm. here, just focus on this today. And at the moment, we're trying to solve the initial problem, right? Trying to find what problems are happening or when they're happening, where they're happening. Um, but it's still up to the, the partner to find out why that is and what could be done about it. But of course, as we move forwards, we're going to try and automate as much of that as possible in a way that the partner is still comfortable with and trusts. And all exactly. At the end of the day, artificial intelligence just helps, mm -hmm. but does not decide, mm -hmm. right? So it's the partner behind, the energy manager, the professional mm -hmm. that should read the data, understand the data, and then make the decisions mm -hmm. on the on the project. Great. So, so now we've got lots of data, we've got AI, we have lots of integrations and so forth. This is now no longer a traditional energy management platform, right? Exactly. So we say that, well, we should give an, another name to that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because so far we've been doing traditional energy manager, but now we have data-driven AI powered energy management. Mm -hmm. And we say that this now should be called energy intelligence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, we are, we are doing that thing, right? That's why, for instance, on the logo, we have changed the subtitle, the, the motto of mm -hmm. the logo. Instead mm -hmm. of energy management, we have now placed energy intelligence. Mm -hmm. And this is our new branding that we launched, was it a month or so ago? A, a month ago, ago. yeah. Um, and I, I guess most of the people on the, the call, if you already use the platform, you'll see that the interface has changed quite a bit. And Alfonso and you are going to show us a bit more about that later. Exactly. But what's behind the new logo? Why did we choose well, this? Well, behind the new logo, there is a, a small story on that, right? If you if you see the X, the X has two colors, right? 50% right. is dark blue. Mm -hmm and the other one it's light green mm -hmm. let's say right mm -hmm. that indicates the transition between a digitalized building uh before and after right okay so that's the idea mm -hmm. right and this is done using energy intelligence mm -hmm. okay great so mio mm. what you don't explain us a bit about the x tech Sure, I'd love to, Danny. Let's let's go ahead. Okay, so um, I've actually just seen somebody on the chat has asked, can we explain a little bit more about NIL, non-intrusive load monitoring? Uh, well, you're in luck because we're about to do that. So uh, good timing on my part. 
So first of all, what is Dexma Detect about and, and why did we why did we put this together? For what reasons did we develop it? Well, maybe uh, a couple of years ago now, uh, we saw that there was increasing energy costs and that's continuing. We've used real stats here from, from Eurostat, for example. Um, so everyone's trying to save money in all kinds of areas. Energy efficiency is obviously a great way to do so. Um, but uh, for us, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> we, we skipped a slide back, and here we go. Um, so, um, uh, so increasing energy costs uh, is definitely one thing that we wanted to help address and energy efficiency is part of that, implementing projects for energy efficiency and knowing which ones uh, to use. The second reason was something that Joanne touched on first uh, off in this presentation as well was about the, the sustainability aspect. We all know that the, the temperatures on this planet are increasing. We all want to be able to do something about that. Uh, for example, the UN has developed their sustainability goals um, for the future. Uh, for example, energy management affects three of these, number seven, 11 and 13. Uh, and there are many other companies, governments, other organisations who are implementing very strict sustainability guidelines and energy management is a very large part of making those things happen. The last reason, uh, which was something that we found was maybe a bit of friction for our existing Dexcel Energy Manager product, which is now called Dexma Analyze, was that uh, it was very expensive to do on-site traditional audits. So uh, what we were seeing was that companies were not wanting to implement energy management because there was hardware involved, installation, there was problems and, and disruptions to their business and so forth. Correct. So, uh, and sometimes when you did that audit, you then found actually this is a really great efficient building. Exactly. There was no point in doing this audit. We've just wasted all this time and money. On, on doing this, right? So how can we help our, our partners and, and customers and so forth to try and uh, focus their time? Like we said before, we're trying to save our partners time and money in doing what they need to do. So um, what we decided was to develop Dexma Detect. And, and by Dexma Detect, what we were talking about here is, is this no friction. So it's no hardware installed. We use fiscal energy meter. So it's just the information from uh, the utility. It's the information that utilities already have in their databases that are often made public to, to their customers as well. Um, there's no on-site work. You don't have to go on site or anything like this. Um, so that's what we wanted to mean by no friction. So there's, there's, so this is the first step to try and find how can we make these buildings more energy efficient and which ways do we do this? This also means no capex, no cost of installation, no cost of sending one on site, uh, no cost of additional hardware, all of this stuff can be saved. So you can roll out this Dexon Detect across a very large portion or all of your customer base uh, for a very low cost. Okay. So how does this actually work? Um, this is the traditional way of, of doing a, a, an audit and of implementing energy efficiency projects. You would install submetering to, to monitor HVAC, lighting, boilers, chillers, and so forth in your building. You would then have to figure out a way to send data to a platform, hopefully Dexma in these cases. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at the moment, we're really proud because we have 80,000 buildings in our database. It's grown quite a lot in just this last year. When I started at Dexma 18 months ago, I think we were talking about 40,000 or 50,000. Mm, so we've almost doubled it in the last year, which is fantastic. Um, but in Europe, there are millions of buildings. Yeah. So actually between five to six million, five to six million um, commercial, industrial and SME buildings, Correct. right? So we, we're taking away residential because Dexma doesn't work so much in the residential space. So how can we help touch the, you know, 5,920,000 buildings that we don't yet have in Dexma? Okay. And so this is how we do it. Now we're saying, if you've got sub, sub metering, fantastic, keep it, and we're going to absolutely help you keep monitoring that. But for those buildings that don't have sub metering, just take a look at your fiscal meters or your main meters that are on site um, and send it to Dexma Detect. We'll put it through our disaggregation engine as well as our benchmarking engine, and then we'll come up with some great results. Okay. So how does it work? We take this fiscal, fiscal metering sorry, data as well as metadata, for example, the building activity, whether it's a supermarket, an office building, um, a school, things like this. 
uh, we also take the location information, we just need the zip code and this is so that we can take into account weather parameters, um, day, day, sorry, hours of daylight during the day and so forth. And the heating and cooling degree and days. And the heating and cooling degree Correct. days, absolutely, very important, especially for those um, those areas that have very high temperatures or, or low temperatures. Exactly. Um, and then we put it into this this magic machine, right, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> There's this beautiful picture that we've drawn, um, which is like a brain. And out on the other side comes three main outputs. The first is a benchmarking against whether it's your internal group of, of buildings, or we also benchmark against our database of buildings. The whole universe. The whole universe. <laughs> well, the Dexma universe, right? Um, and we'll show you a little bit about how we do that uh, in a second. Uh, but we also do the load disaggregation. So this is the NILM, N-I-L-M, that Danny was explaining before. So we can tell you from just the fiscal meter what percentage we think is cooling, heating, lighting, and so forth. And then we can say, with all of that information, what are the best retrofits for this particular customer? And this can depend on, on the, the partner we're working with as to the type of retrofits we want to offer. Obviously, everyone will have different CapEx and OpEx costs and so forth. Okay. So actually, how does it work if I've got an example? We have one office building in London. It's just five and a half thousand square meters. We've got 12 months of fiscal metering data. This might be monthly data. It might be smart meter data if it's available. Uh, then Dexma Detect looks at the load curve, whether that's monthly data or, or more frequent data. And then we normalize it into um, a cluster of, of curves, basically. Then we compare this cluster against buildings in our database with a similar type of load curve um, and cluster characteristics. So for example, if this is representative of our 80,000 buildings, these buildings in green are the ones that we see are very similar to the office building that we're looking at. Okay, so this is how we kind of do the benchmarking to start with, right? But we also use this for other parts of Dexma Detect. Um, and then we move on to the non-intrusive load monitoring. So obviously over the last 10 years, we've been gathering a lot of data with sub-metering uh, and main meter data. And so we use this as our training set for Dexma Detect. Um, we've got 26 business sectors, we've got all of these building data, so we can infer just from having the main meter information what percentage of those is cooling, heating, lighting, and so forth. This is based on a statistical model. Correct. Um, and the more data we have, the more accurate this is going to be as well. Um, so all of this, this, this a uh, traditional circuit, which is now um, kind of squared up in blue, uh, is now going through the, the Dexma Detect engine, through the nil methods and so forth, and so we can break this down like we have here. Okay, so that's all very well, but what's the value proposition here? Why on earth would one of our partners or, or customers want to be using this platform? So, so firstly, let's say you have a thousand buildings. You want to know which has the biggest upgrade potential. This may not be 100% accurate, but we know that it's very accurate and accurate enough for you to say, this is my worst performing 10% of buildings. These are the 10% of buildings I really need to focus on in order to get the lowest hanging fruit, the, the more value for the dollars and euros and pounds spent. Well, you can also then find out where are they over consuming? Is it the lighting that's a problem? Is it the HVAC circuits? Is it standby power? If we have smart meter data, we can infer things like standby power. And then what should I do in each building? And like I said before, this will very much depend on our partner and, and the kinds of services they offer, the kinds of structures that they have around paying this back. But in order to do that, we can provide some financial information like return on investment and so forth as exactly. well. So maybe Danny, you can tell us what's new in 2019. Why are we talking about this again today at, at Dexmo? Exactly. So, well, one of the first thing that we did during this year is, was actually introducing that product that was named before as the energy grader. Now it's Dexmo Tech and now becomes part of the Dexmos family, right? Mm -hmm. As the first model. This is what we call product integration. Mm -hmm. Then of course we start, we, we, let's say we continue to work adding new sectors to the NLMI, mm -hmm. Uh, methods and of course getting higher and higher accuracy. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is all as a result of the many projects we've actually done this year as exactly. well, right? So this is from real experience with real partners. With real audits and so on. Yes. 
and now we have created a totally new user experience so it will be so fast and so easy to use the product mm -hmm. actually if you don't mind me we can we can maybe show it to the audience i think they would really like that so let's go ahead good so if we move to the, yeah so we start showing powerpoint and we and we start showing like the real <laughs> and now we're actually in a real browser so that's good news the real world right <laughs> everything that i'm going to show you guys you can actually access it from our corporate demo so mm -hmm. www.dexma.com it would be a, a a button there saying a resistor for the demo mm -hmm. uh, and if you go there you fill it with your credentials you will have access just right now to this specific yep. deployment this is exactly what you'll see and if you have any troubles accessing that demo um, always feel free to let us know in the chat here or send us an email plenty of email addresses in the presentation that you can take down Exactly. So right now, I want to move to the detect module mm -hmm. of this because Alfonso will explain later on the analyze model. Mm -hmm. uh, but and, if we... and that menu sort of become new, right, in the last few weeks. So that's not something you would have seen, let's say, in August or September. <laughs> exactly. <year. laughs> well, in fact, this is what we say, the product integration menu yeah. that actually allows our customers to move from one module to another one. Very easy, very, very fast, right? Mm -hmm. So now we are in the analyze part. We have loaded here around 100 buildings, mm -hmm. okay, just to show the power mm -hmm. of, of the tool. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are now aggregating all of them, just to remind the people, uh, it's very easy to, to navigate uh, with Dexma using the global navigator. You have the location search here, you have different levels, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna keep on the global level, mm -hmm. so I have an overview of everything running mm -hmm. down my portfolio. Mm -hmm. So here in that case, Dexmay Tech is telling me that we're analyzing a bit more than 700,000 square meters that uh, would be around 70 gigawatt hour yeah. in, in energy, that it's around 10 million euros, more yeah. or less. Yeah. Okay. And he's saying to me, hey, Daniel, your portfolio on average has a 58 up to 100 score. So it's about the middle of the road. So about the, yeah, it's yeah. above the middle. It's above the middle, but only just. So there's definitely room for improvement. In exactly, exactly. And that's the idea. And, exact, and, and the average improvement room would be around 22% in savings potential, okay? Comparing your buildings versus similar buildings that we have into our database, mm -hmm. making the normalizations that, that are required. And for. that's a whole lot of euros on the right-hand side. That and that's the big figure. That's the one that you want to know when you're starting a project, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, if I'm going to invest one hour of my time here, mm -hmm. how much I'm going to get? Yeah. How much could I offer to my mm -hmm. customers, right? Mm -hmm. And it's about 2 million euros in annual savings, of course, with investment, mm -hmm. with the recommendations that we have analyzed, that we have simulated, mm -hmm. okay? So here it's like the overall data. Mm -hmm. Then you have, of course, the top location ranking, right? So you can see very quick which are the worst ones from the energy perspective, but the best ones from the energy manager's perspective, mm -hmm. because are the ones that you start working on right today, mm -hmm. because are the ones that have more potential savings, mm -hmm. okay, more savings potential. This is a segmentation of your portfolio, mm -hmm. okay? This is intended to show to you how many buildings do you have in each range of savings. Mm -hmm. Let me move it here, mm -hmm. okay? So that's telling me, hey, Daniel, around 44, 54 buildings have less than 20% potential savings. So we probably won't worry about those to start with. Correct. Yeah. It's just for the third phase or fourth phase of the project in mm -hmm. around 2024, but not <laughs> now, right? So you should now start for those ones that are, those 27 buildings have between 40 to 60% mm -hmm. savings. You have 27 here. So let's just focus on those ones, okay? We will, we will go there later on. Mm -hmm. This is another chart showing uh, square meters uh, in function of the energy, mm -hmm. right? So this is the, let's say your model of this ratio. And then you should look for the top uh, part and the, the the bigger ones, the red ones, right? So those are the ones that have more mm -hmm. savings potential. Those so are actually the low hanging fruit. Yeah. So this is a good traffic light indicator. Red is bad. Let's look at red. Very easy. Red. Very easy. <laughs> and this is your energy distribution. Okay. So this is in amount of energy building by building. So you can do very easy the Pareto analysis mm -hmm. here, right? 
So that's actually quite interesting because the second bar there is green. So actually yeah. it's not doing too badly. It's consuming a lot, but it's a really big um, building, I would assume. And um, and it and there's a reason why it's consuming quite a lot. So actually that one's fine. We should just leave that one and look at some of Exactly. Videos. So in the traditional way in selecting buildings, the mm -hmm. second one would probably be selected mm -hmm. because it's very big, right? Mm -hmm. So it has like six gigawatt hour mm -hmm. per year. Mm -hmm. So you would go there. Mm -hmm. but the tech is telling you that it's only half it only have like 14 percent energy savings mm -hmm. potential mm -hmm. so better move to the third one or to the fourth mm -hmm. or even to that one right yeah. red is bad exactly red is very bad <laughs> very easy and then here you have the whole list with the with the data mm -hmm. right so each of the columns is referring to one specific meta information or information that we have from the building mm -hmm. what i really love here it's to then sort by estimated savings. Uh, ah, that's cool as well. You can you can export all the data uh, in an Excel spreadsheet, so you can end up your analysis uh, or merge it with other mm -hmm. uh, information that you may have out of the platform. But right now, I would like to focus in one of the top buildings that Dexmay Tech is telling me that we have more than 200,000 euros in energy savings potential. Okay, let's do it. Actually, well, Houston has as well a lot of potential. Maybe it's because, well, it could be because Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's move to uh, the office building number three. You just simply need to click there and you go directly to the virtual audit. Okay, so it's very easy to start from a global way and then narrow down to the local yeah. problem, okay. right? Now it's getting all the information that we have calculated for the virtual outlet. Mm -hmm. It's here. Let me just change that in a satellite away. Okay, that's good. So, yeah, so it's a building located here in Barcelona. Uh, actually, we are we are not that efficient here. So, uh, <laughs> well, such an efficient country. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So it's a 30,000, close to 30,000 square meter building, mm -hmm. and it's consuming a bit more than six gigawatt per year. So it's a it's an it's an important building. It has potential savings according to the XML Tech and comparing versus the peers of 28%. Okay, and it's going to be a bit more of 200,000 euros per year savings potential. So it's definitely worth it to have a look and start uh, the the energy efficiency journey mm -hmm. with that building. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that chart, very specific for that virtual audit, we are showing actually this is your consumption. Okay, so this is your last 12 months. Well, actually, it's a natural year mm -hmm. consumption. This is January and this is uh, December. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have three colors. Each bar has three colors. Why is that? Well, basically, because if we make a zoom, we will see that uh, the the light blue it's the profile according if you would be the score hundred. Mm -hmm. into our database mm -hmm. so the best building that we have uh, that is similar to you is consuming at that range with that pattern okay, okay. in fact i could even disable those ones so mm -hmm. that would be you mm -hmm. if you would be the 100 the, the best performer exactly yeah, so it's like your stuff. digital twin it's like your <laughs> energy twin your energy this is your optimal energy twin exactly okay then if you want to be just on the 50s, mm -hmm. okay, so You're an average, average energy score, yeah. you should be consuming in that way, okay. okay? But as you're exceeding that, actually you are on 46 mm -hmm. up to 100, you are getting all of this. Yeah. So of course, all of this chunk of energy could be potential energy safe. Right, okay? of course. So that gives you an idea of on which months of the year you have a higher energy savings potential. Yeah. Actually, we are seeing that you could probably have problems. Well, you have a standby problem, that for sure. Mm -hmm. But then probably on winter, I on summer, sorry, on summer, you could have more potential savings and as well in winter. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then we move to the right hand and we have the results from the NILM mm -hmm. algorithms. Okay. okay. And it's telling me actually that around 50% of my energy consuming that building, it's spent in the lighting system, mm -hmm. okay? And then around 20% on the cooling and 16% on the heating. And then the other things we cannot understand what is going on. Mm -hmm. So we put it in others. 
So this would sort of make sense, I guess, because we were saying they clearly have a standby problem. A lot of that's probably coming from lighting, perhaps. Could be. Uh, we also said that, um, you know, in summer they had a, a higher um, a higher usage compared to the average than in winter. So we have more cooling than we do heating, for example. Mm -hmm. So so these things are all sort of starting to make sense when you put them together. And then we are telling you because, okay, so I, I was very sceptic about the artificial intelligence. Skeptical person. Skeptical, yes. sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I told to my engineers to put here uh, an indicator mm -hmm. regarding how reliable mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, building with that algorithms mm -hmm. so we can make better decisions. Right, okay. Actually, and it works like the traffic light again. Mm -hmm. We have three different metrics, high reliable, highly reliable, uh, medium or low. Hello? Okay. So depending on the ones that, that shows up, you can make more decisions or not. And this is based, I guess, in part on the amount of data. If you have large gaps in your data, this would affect your reliability and so yeah. forth as well. Okay. Then if we still going down, this is the virtual audit, right? So we are getting all of this information without even going to the building. Wow. This is this is important to understand. Yeah, absolutely. Then we have the anomaly detection algorithms running here, right? Mm -hmm. As we were getting data, last 12 months data in hourly basis, mm -hmm. we could tell to algorithms, hey, learn about this building, how is this consuming, and calculate automatically the baseline, which is in black, in the black line, mm -hmm. and then tell me if during the last month of December, uh, it could potentially uh, produce some inefficiencies. Right, okay. Okay. Actually, the system detected 19 anomalies. Mm -hmm. uh, we have put it here in a, in a calendar, so mm -hmm. you know which day actually on 28th of December mm -hmm. was the worst day during that month regarding mm -hmm. the anomalies. Mm -hmm. And as well, we did like a general daily pattern mm -hmm. showing which hours of the day you have more possibilities to have anomalies. That's pretty important to know actually, because that looks like about the time people are coming to work and things like that, that could be a problem, okay? Exactly. Then if we keep moving down, we have talked about benchmarking, NIL, the global overview. Mm -hmm. This part is mainly based on the recommendations. So okay. what can we do mm -hmm. to reduce this amount of energy? Mm -hmm right? Mm -hmm. And to get this savings potential. Mm -hmm. We basically have a retrofit catalog, a recommendations catalog, that it's continuously simulating technologies on each building. Okay. Right? Okay. And each time it simulates a potential technology to a potential building, mm -hmm. it calculates a sort of financial metrics. Okay. So you have all of this information on this table mm -hmm. and you can decide which is the, let's say, um, the, the road to success for mm -hmm. each building, right? Mm -hmm. So which recommendations you should perform in order to get not 100 maybe, mm -hmm. but to be above 60 or 70 into it's the It's the 80-20 20 rule, right? You, exactly. you invest 20% to get 80% of the um, of the results. So the kind of financial information we've used here in this demo is kind of information from our partners and so forth about what the approximate or, or a good estimation of costs might be. But of course, uh, if, if our partners want to go and use this platform, they can then change these financial parameters as to what they know for themselves would be the actual costs. Exactly. So this is, this is a standard retrofit catalog yeah. that we have created according to our experience. Yeah. Our partners could configure the CAPEX cost, mm -hmm. the OPEX cost, mm -hmm. lifetime, different recommendations. So the system actually simulates all of this mm -hmm. and makes a lot of stuff done. Yeah, right? absolutely. Okay. Actually, the system is telling us that we could be implementing those two retrofits, traditional lighting substitution to LED technology. Mm -hmm. He's detecting that we're consuming like half of our energy in lighting mm -hmm. and it's comparing versus other buildings. This is not normal. Yeah. So that's why he's telling us to do this mm -hmm. and then to improve the chiller, right? Mm -hmm. Look that with, with this both at retrofits, we will have a return of an investment between four to five years. Mm -hmm. If I start adding other recommendations, mm -hmm. then this chart starts to change. Moves, okay. yeah, recalculates mm -hmm. and gives you the total capex that you may need, the total investment, the mm -hmm. total opex that you will have, the total amount of savings. Yeah. So it's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the end, when you have configured your own audit, 
you can just click here and it downloads a PDF with the summary of mm -hmm. all of this screen. Mm -hmm. And you can show it to the customer, mm -hmm. okay, with right. the retrofits mm -hmm. that you have selected there. And and what if the the partner doesn't want the customer to have the you know the name Dexmer in there? What can they do about that? <laughs> well, that's normal. Uh, the 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 tool, <laughs> as as always, we are uh, white label, mm -hmm. so the customer just can give us the, the logo and their corporate colors, mm -hmm. and we will replace that for, for the Dexma colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. And just going into your words that you talk about the recommendations catalog, mm -hmm. it, it will be worth it to have a look at it, right? Yeah, I think so. So this part here, it's our basic recommendations catalog. It has a list of 18 different recommendations so far. Mm -hmm moving from ventilation heat recovery to a conventional boiler to biomass boiler replacement, mm -hmm. or even to solar panels, right? right? Of course. So you have all of the different recommendations that an energy manager could recommend. Mm -hmm. You as a partner can configure this, tune up regarding to your cost into your country, mm -hmm. select or unselect which ones you wanna mm -hmm. simulate or not. And, and let's say, you know, this partner does a lot in the storage space. Could they add this as a completely new recommendation if they wanted to as well? Yes, yeah. exactly. So this is totally open. Mm -hmm. So each of you guys, you can configure your own set of recommendations and make the machine simulate for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that that's all. Of course, if you have questions, you can use the go to webinar box there. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of questions about this, but maybe we'll keep them to the exactly, end. Exactly, to the Q&A. You're going to be coming back to help answer the Q&A? Of course, yes. of course. Okay, fantastic. Alrighty, so thanks very much to Danny for that. Um, now we're going to be handing over the control reins to Alfonso, and he's going to tell us more about Dexma Analyze and what we've done this year for the platform. Oh. Well, just <laughs> we before, forgot one slide. <laughs> yeah, before we move, just very very quick, what what as as a recap of all of this text detect thing, right? So we have improved the artificial intelligence algorithm. We have this catalog of recommendations. We you can compare your building against eighty thousand buildings that is available into the Dexmas universe. We have developed a new, easy to use, uh, very fast new user experience, user interface. The accuracy that we're getting on the NL, NILM, NILM algorithms is so good. Um, you don't need to use hardware, and this is reducing the friction that we have. You can download the audits and reports, and it's already integrated into the DEXMA family as the first step in the energy management journey. So if you would like to try, uh, you can just send an email to sales at dexma.com, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, talk uh, with Mio or with with one of our other salespeople. Exactly. Well. So our whole team will see your email. We'll find out who's the best person to speak with you. Um, we'll talk through your potential projects and how you want to use this, um, and understand if Dexman Detect is right for you. Um, and then we can work together on a demo. Correct. Mm -hmm. And. Right now, I am moving. <laughs> it's time to now arrive. it's actually it's time, time to for Alfonso. Alfonso to come on board. Okay. Sorry, Alfonso. <laughs> okay. Um, Dexmanalyze. Dexmanalyze is uh, the tool for the for the energy manager. It's that tool to deeply analyze your building in detail. Okay, it's the previously known as Dexel Energy Manager. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, module of the platform that um, allows you to get into the detail of each of your uh, meters or submitters even. So this is the one that allows you to analyze real-time monitoring coming from uh, a lot of uh, hardware vendors or uh, even API, etc. So you can get all the data into the software, then allows you to define and um, verify the savings that is all about saving energy while we are here. So this is where you can analyze all these figures and then allows you also to 
uh, share all this uh, information to engage your team or to uh, share it with your customers through reports, alerts, and we will see some of these uh, methods now. And well, what it's new in this uh, year, uh, during this year, we've been working in MMV improvements. We will see uh, later that uh, accumulated charts, um, accumulated saving chart that is really powerful to take a look on the uh, project's uh, situation and also uh, on the nearly zero energy buildings app that is one of the three apps i want to show you now coming from the from the apps market mm -hmm. also this year we have integrated with the sigfox uh, network uh, you may know sigfox as one of the uh, key players in the iot world uh, this allows you to uh, install uh, battery-powered probes uh, that are wireless and really easy to install and to deploy in your uh, in your building. So, also we've been working in some MQTT hardware solutions uh, that is other of the uh, protocols that is now uh, very useful, uh, very um, common in the IoT world. <laughs> and also working as ever in new tariffs and new yeah. uh, countries at least, yeah. uh, like the portugal one well i, I think that that alfonso it's a very it's a very common thing that we show every year right so keeping mm -hmm. yep well in, in fact we always continue integrating new new hardware new solutions and new countries so it's uh but what about the the new ui that is, That's good. What about the new UI, what Alfonso? About? We will see now. We've been working this year very hard on this new UI, and with we are sure you will you will love it. But I don't want to uh, keep this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so let's start with the demo. Actually, product people, I think, you know that we don't really like PowerPoint. No, I no, I think like. you like, I think you like Chrome better, probably. Right? Yeah, current, yeah. current <laughs> websites yes. and everything working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Showing. sure. I prefer yeah. to to go directly to the platform. Mm -hmm. um, I will begin before going uh, into analyze. In fact, I will show you uh, two of the areas that are uh, used across the the whole platform. One is the apps market. Uh, then we talk about this uh, apps market and we will show you some of these apps. But remember that you can create your own apps to define your own roadmap for anything you need. And the other part I want to show you is the settings that are now shared between Dexma Analyze and Dexma Detect. Okay, here is where you can define this hierarchy, uh, locations hierarchy or the supplies and prices, gateways, all the stuff uh, regarding to settings. And I want to show you how uh, our gateways area looks like now because it is increasing every day and how this Sigfox has been uh, added uh, recently. As you can see, lots of manufacturers, uh, lots of hardware vendors, lots of different platforms that are already integrated like also, other standard protocols like FTP, SFTP, email allows you to send files coming from different um, from different systems, different platforms. And also, if you know, you can uh, start sending uh, data through our insertion API right to this uh, virtual gateway. And that's often how companies who have data lakes, for example, would yeah. be inserting their data. Right. So now it's time to go to analyze. This is where uh, Analyze Always Land is in our dashboard. And you may know that uh, Dexma always work in this hierarchy level, aggregating all the uh, consumptions uh, in the hierarchy level that you are uh, now. But now I don't want to uh, show you uh, feature per feature. I want to talk about one uh, specific building that we have recently added to our demo, and it is the Stuttgart one. Stuttgart, it's yeah. it's really cold there, <laughs> isn't it, Mio? Right? Yes, I live very close to there, and yes, it's quite cold. Right? It's quite cold. <laughs> if we take a look in the consumption screen, we can have that this building have uh, some metering for 
here. Well, here we see this second There's a problem. Floor. Yeah. Yeah, this is over consuming and weekend, I think. But well, I want to focus on the overall consumption, in fact, and how this main consumption is compared with the fiscal meter. In green, we have the building consumption. Okay. So these are supposed to be the same lines. Yes. Well, in fact, it's the, the, the usual is that main consumption or the, the consumption from the building is always, uh, that energy is always imported from the grid. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we are seeing that uh, fiscal meter is, uh, fiscal meter energy is lower than the uh, building consumption. Which and, is weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it, has a, it, it has a reason, of course, you may imagine it, and it is because this uh, building has a solar plant, okay? And I want to show you how this building performs in terms of photovoltaics also. So if we take a look on the solar plant during this year, so far this year, we can see that despite the building had some production, uh, well, uh, until March, in during this month, the production in the solar plant was increased from 190 to an average of, uh, well, uh, up to 700 kilowatt uh, power. This is huge. Yeah, it is a great commitment with photovoltaics because um, in Stuttgart, they want to become a nearly zero energy building. Okay. okay? And this is why, uh, despite the production was good, uh, they have uh, expanded this solar plant uh, with a huge investment, of course, to save the more energy possible and to save, of course, uh, costs now and also in the future. Regarding to costs, if we go to the cost screen, we can see that thing I was telling you about. That is, if we check, for instance, last seven days, well, last seven days is what we are seeing right now, but we can see like uh, in daylight hours, there is no cost. Here we see on Friday, we can see also here in the weekend that the cost has lowered down compared to the cost we have if we check the main consumption. So the idea is, of course, that during the daylight, this energy cost is, uh, well, we have lots of, uh, of savings, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, what if we want to focus just in this cost or in the energy we are consuming? If so, we can, go to create an alert, for instance, to report our, uh, our team or our customers if the cost exceeds a threshold or the consumption, or even if we have no data, for sure this is- Because of hardware fails. Yeah, right? hardware fails. Well, uh, I like hardware also. I want the, the data from all the hardware in your building so that we can uh, analyze in real time. So this is how we can manage uh, the alerts and we can alert our customers or our uh, team about the performance in our building. But of course, we want to go further in this yeah, analysis. Exactly, Alfonso. So could you show us how is the net zero energy building performing? Yeah, sure. The idea is to use this, energy, uh, this nearly zero energy buildings app is to show you the energy balance of your buildings, okay? If we go to February, that is before the solar plant expansion, we can see how this building has a good, um, a good generation, a good production in, in green, but if you take a look in the consumption and the loads, it is much higher. So despite it has a good production, uh, it can cover uh, the consumption of the building. The solar panel wasn't sized properly for the load, I guess, in this case. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. And for sure, to cover that consumption, we have to import a lot of energy from the grid. And that's uh, the energy that is built to us, okay? Now we can compare it 
with April, that is after that solar plant expansion. And now we can, well, I will disable for a moment the grid, and you now can see how this production is huge. In fact, it's bigger than the consumption uh, most of the day, but for sure, uh, as the sun is not always available, we have- <laughs> We have clouds, right? <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> have to, to, to continue importing some, uh, some energy from the grid. But all this exceed energy is also exported to the grid, as you can see in yellow. So mm -hmm. it's that energy balance that uh, this energy, uh, energy, energy building uh, has, and this app allows you to compare really and to have an overall idea of uh, how the yeah, building actually, is performing. This 66 self-consumption ratio is really nice. Yeah. It's really good. It sounds really, really good. And also it allows you to see in the Sankey chart uh, that most of the load is being covered by the production, by the solar plant, okay? What if we want to continue? This uh, nearly general energy buildings app has also a storage area, but it's not the case of this building. But if so, you can even export this uh, energy. Instead to export it to the grid, you could uh, charge uh, a battery, for instance, and then discharge it at the night. So really um, powerful tools to analyze your uh, building, okay? So we've seen why this building uh, has uh, so uh, low energy, but now we want to focus on the savings because when you invest that amount of money in a solar plant, you want to be sure that the savings are the right ones. So now we want to focus on that measuring and verification area of uh, DEXMA Analyze, okay? If you are a company investing, you will for sure uh, ask to uh, NESCO, uh, an energy services company, to perform a MMV project. Dexmanalyze uh, is uh, compatible with IPMVP protocol. And I want to show you how this measure and verification module looks like. Here you can see the reference uh, consumption, the baseline consumption, that is the consumption that the building may have had if those energy performance measures uh, uh, haven't uh, car uh, been carried out, right? But if you have ever created a baseline, you may know it's really, it's hard. really hard. It's really, really difficult, okay? And it requires a lot of time. So that's why Dexma uh, created the automatic baseline calculator, okay? Uh, with this tool, you will see how easy creating a baseline is. Automatically, as we are on the Stuttgart hierarchy level, it detects the devices that are available. And if I select the fiscal meter as the target device, and automatically the software uh, um, uses its weather uh, information to create this baseline. I will uh, select the uh, daily Sorry, I have a problem with this. Uh, with this call, I don't know why. If you um, select to calculate the baseline, you will see now, sorry, you will see how it changes between a monthly frequency or a daily one so that you can start creating your own baseline automatically. So now, Alfonso, you have calculated a daily, a daily baseline for the last year. Yes. In fact, if you see here, you have the reference period last year. All the energy that we have been monitoring through the years is used to calculate this uh, formula. And let's say you have three years of historical data. You could use all three years, yes, right, as for sure. reference period. Okay. For sure. And also, this is the formula that DEXMA is, uh, is giving you. But there's a couple what of... if you have a better one? What if you are an expert in terms of defining baselines? That is a hard to, but you can for sure also use your own baseline to evaluate which is which is better, or just iterate it 
uh, to a better one, mm -hmm. okay? Or maybe you could use rounder numbers, for example. You might not want to use numbers with yeah, six to make decimals. Make it simpler. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some of the variables has a huge cost to, mm -hmm. to get the data, so you don't mm -hmm. want to use it. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a tool for you to improve your baselines, and well, you've seen how easy is to create one. Okay, so let's focus now on the savings. This project had a target, a savings target of about 40%. It's a lot, but well, we are just getting 34%. It's mm -hmm. a, a good amount of, of savings, but it's not uh, over the target. Mm -hmm. Why? Just because the delay of the solar plant. This mm -hmm. project was uh, starting the 1st of January, but uh, as you've seen, the solar plant was expanded on uh, the 26th of March, more or less, more or less here. And you can see now how the savings are increasing uh, in the time. Mm -hmm. So despite in certain points, you can see uh, that the savings are about 40% and more even, the accumulated savings are on about 33%. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the delays. Yeah, just because of the delays, all this area is now a problem. But yeah. if we continue saving, maybe we will arrive to that 40% yeah. at the end of the year. Mm, it, it seems difficult to arrive. And, well, and that's a really good visual to see. If you showed that to your customer and said, look, this is the reason why you could pinpoint exactly where exactly. your solar panels have or, been upgraded. Or even sharing that to a report. Yeah, absolutely. You said reports? Okay, <laughs> let's go to the reports because that's how another of the tools you have to uh, share the information in Dexma Allies. We have lots of different templates uh, that you can use, like the uh, billing, uh, electricity bills, etc. But now we want to show you those custom reports, the ones that you can customize by your own and create exactly the report you want to share with your team or your customers. And, and if anyone who's listening is interested in knowing more about how to make a custom report, we have a webinar specifically on this yep. topic. So sure. go have a look at our website or email us and we'll let you know where that is. So this is what you can create by your own and uh, define exactly the way you want. It's fully customized. And to end, I want to show you those dashboards again because I want to show you another app that is the Synoptic one. Synoptic app is uh, that uh, customized view of your building that you want to share with your oh, wow. team to see data in real time working in a um, fully customizable uh, uh, dashboard. So, so it's so, like placing your data points there, right? So your variables. Right, okay. uh, you have here all the subconsumptions, weather information in real time, uh, fiscal meters, or even all the energy balance we've seen on the Nearly Zero Energy Buildings app, you can, it can be shown also here. So Dexmanalyze is the tool you need to get all your data in real time, define the savings, verify the savings, and also share all, the, uh, all that information with your customers, your team, and keep improving your, your buildings. And that's everything I wanted to show you. And yeah, just like a recap, uh, Dexma analysis ends up ready, right? Yep. Uh, you can create it, you can actually configure the deploy in MIO in bulk. Mm -hmm. So that means that you don't have to spend too much time going yeah. form by form creating mm -hmm. your you just need to import an Excel spreadsheet and everything will be configured. No, no thousand clicks to try and no get thousand. through hundreds of locations. <laughs> exactly. And, and even to maintain those yeah. projects, right? Yeah. Because those are multi-year projects, so they change a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So you have to maintain and you have to use this feature. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are uh, hardware agnostic. We talk about Sigfox, uh, the AA powered tools like the baseline calculation that Alfonso has shown before. This is based on real artificial intelligence. It's not just words. We, just we use words. it. We have an actual data science team exactly. to back up what we're saying. We invest on that. We believe on that <laughs> yeah. to make energy intelligence. Yeah. We have shown the new user interface. We have talked a lot about electricity and import, export, but uh, the Exmo Analyze, it's capable to manage energy in 11 different energy sources. Mm -hmm. That means not just electricity, but gas, water, thermal, 
everything, yeah. right? And even we have a list of more than 200 different parameters. And if you want to monitor something that it's not there, you just ask and we add. Yeah, you ask and we add. Exactly. Okay. Then we have more than 33 apps available and the API, really important, uh, report templates and real-time alerts, and limited users and historical data. This is so important because we believe that people changes the world. Mm -hmm. So we need to deliver uh, tools to people. That's why we don't charge per user. So you have unlimited user. You can create as many users as you need. And we want to we want to make sure that our partners, customers are engaged as exactly. well. Exactly. So we want to give them as much uh, of an ability to be able to do that too. And then again, Dexma Analyze is unificated inside the whole Dexma experience, Dexma Analyze and Control. Mm -hmm. Great. And just as a final recap, the three steps towards the energy efficiency with Dexma, that's why it is a unique platform because it allows you the first step of detecting potential savings, second step of analyzing those savings and verifying savings, and then step three is to control your buildings. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of a switcheroo. Um, I'm going to change seats, so you're just going to lose me for a second. Um, but now we're going to just do a very short presentation about how to start working with us. We went a little bit over time um, in terms of doing our, our product um, showing, but we thought that was where we wanted to spend most of our time. So um, it will be me and Chavi Nobea, who's our operations director, and we'll be talking about how you start working with us. Okay, so uh, first of all, I will just put the camera on for a second uh, so that you can see Chavi. This is Chavi, our operations director. Uh, you may have received an email from him or many emails from him. He's actually a real person. He has a real face. <laughs> Hello, Mia. Hello, everybody. Yes, that's Fantastic. me. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so let's get going, Chavi, on, on our part of the presentation yeah. so that we can get on to Q&A afterwards Perfect. as well. And I think all you need to do is this. Okay, so uh, this is Chubby at that's work, me, yeah. uh, and that's actually Jordi Garcia. He's on the right. You may have also received emails from Jordi, and I think it's Julia in the background yeah. as well, right? So part all of part of our of our customer success team. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay, so. Um, uh, how is working with us? It's never been so fast. Okay, so. Uh, let's move on. Yep. Uh, there we go. Okay. So for your profile, uh, what kind of a company are you? Um, we've had a look at our attendees list today and there's a whole range of different companies who, who are here. We've got utilities, we have ESCOs, we have OEMs, and we have a lot of existing partners, which is great to see. They're all interested a lot in, in what we do. But we also have some corporations, some end customers and so forth as well. So, so we're looking at this from two different perspectives. If you're a potential partner, those kinds of companies on the left hand side, uh, listen up to hear about how our partner program works. Um, if you're an end customer, a big corporation or you have a big project to work with, um, speak with us because we often put these kinds of consortiums together. We get uh, the best located partner in your country or in your group of countries that you want to work with, with experience in these kinds of projects, and we'll put you together and so our partner can deliver a well-rounded project, hopefully using our software. Um, so please come speak to us uh, in any of the email addresses that you see later today. This is our partner program. Um, it's the partner program we've kind of had for a couple of years now. Um, and so here we're showing you the silver, gold and platinum categories. These categories are based on your annual spend with us, basically. And as usual, the more money you wanna spend with us, the, the more benefits you get. Um, so all of our partners have email support from Chavi's team. Uh, they all can have access, for example, to the support at dexma.com website, which has improved excellently exponentially yes. in the last year. So I'm very happy to, <laughs> to say that for yeah, sure, um, since we've now grown your team to seven, which Chubby will, will speak about yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you always have support from the sales team, whether that's from me, Didier or Roger. Um, and we also, for all the silver, gold and platinum partners, we try and help you with opportunities assignments. So if we do have those end customers that are coming to us with projects, we try and find the best partner um, to work with you. Obviously, as you move 
move up. Um, the, the Gold and Platinum partners have telephone support from Chavi's team. You also have access to our API, which is important for the kinds of things that Danny and his team were talking about in terms of developing new functionality and so forth. Um, and for our Platinum partners, these are our top, top partners. We go and see them at least once, sometimes twice a year to get their feedback on roadmap. Um, and they actually have a really integral effect on, on the kinds of directions that we take with our platform. Okay, let's move on. So just the last thing I wanted to, to talk about today was that if you are an end customer and, and we've, we've written eight verticals here, but really we have end customers from a whole lot of other verticals as well. Um, speak with us. We'll, we know that we have partners um, in our network that can help you, that can deliver these kinds of energy efficiency projects. ESCOs, um, they can also, some of them can help with financing, all of this sort of stuff as well. Um, so we really want to be able to enable you to find the best project. And we also want to enable our partners um, to deliver great projects and also increase their business as well. Okay, so Chavi, it's never been so fast, but it's also never been so easy. Indeed, Mio. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, it, it's really easy. So once you have signed up with 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 us, so Mio has. Uh, I've done my job properly. Your job, <laughs> then uh, you will you will get uh, involved in in our onboarding process, which is really really easy. So it's never been so easy. So we will welcome you with a with an introduction email where you will have our warm welcome but also our, our resources available with credentials and articles explaining how to start with us so it's really hands off and really automatic mm -hmm. after this first step very easy a second step will be in case of big projects or complex projects uh, we'll sit down we'll have a kickoff session just to know um, know a bit more about you but yeah nevertheless uh, quite quite straightforward this is and also to help you maybe how to set up your account, how best to set up your location hierarchies, the type of thing you want to do, maybe which apps would be useful. Yeah, right. right. So uh, mm -hmm. every project, big project has its complexity and mm -hmm. we are aware of it and, and we, we can have uh, a lot, a lot okay. helping with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after this, this part of the, of the steps, then we will go to a, a platform login. So you will have already the credentials uh, from the beginning. You will be able to start and, and in your backend, you will be able to create accounts. So it's quite straightforward. And yeah, as, as SaaS culture, uh, you, you have all the product from, from day one, from the beginning. You don't have to install anything, just log in and, and configure your first account. Mm -hmm. After the creation of this account, you just have to configure it. So again, go up to the, go, go into the, to the login screen and, and configure your, your created account you will see that it's really intuitive so our product guys here have done a great job <laughs> thanks <Charlie. laughs> uh, yeah. and and that's it so once you have a certain uh, gateways the uh, location hierarchy and all your your custom needs then you will start playing around with your own data so just analyzing forecasting uh, carbon emissions comparison evolution uh, consumptions whatever you you need for your for your projects okay and your team has really worked like i said before on the the help desk articles too so how to start an account in 15 minutes there's a, a i know i've read that many times yeah um, there's a, an article called this um exactly how to set up location hierarchies um how to use the the consumption screen all of that sort of stuff we've got a lot of great material on that now too that's right yeah we we have we have tried to to write down everything so that you can autonomously work uh, alone mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. But nevertheless, this this is this is for 90% of our cases. Most of us uh, don't need any help to to go go along with the software. But for these 10% that still need uh, more help because there's complexity inside, uh, just feel free to call us. We have a, a ticketing tool just to drop up emails and, and follow up your issues, mm -hmm. and of course phone number, etc. To 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 keep caring about you because we. The more we communicate, the the better for for both parties. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And that's that's the single steps. There's no magic beneath. That's that's quite uh, some years of experience and and gathering information and planning a bit. Mm -hmm. And we have elaborated a process for those big projects that maybe require more more attention because of the complexity. We involve 
always as someone of the team, the customer success team, to go along with you in this journey of onboarding. And after this welcome, we maybe sit down in the in the in the communication. Uh, we have a lot of channels of, to communicate. We have in the platform, we have uh, communications in in app. We have uh, our support uh, uh, mail, just like uh, Mio pointed out. Also the public uh, web content with all our articles. Of course, you can drop us an email. You can call us, and if the if, the, if required, we will put a customer success manager for, for you just to assist on the on the journey. And the process is quite simple. So just uh, knowing about you at first, then we'll configure and then we'll, you will master and we will go into the, the little things. So just in the, in the first part, we will getting in touch just to, to explain thoroughly your projects, to see where can we help, how to help. Then we will go into the setup phase where we maybe help you migrate with automations to, to parse your information from another platform to see how we'll go real time with this information, to import and migrate all the historical information that you have already to analyze. And of course, in the in-bulk setup that maybe Alfonso and, and Danny pointed out before. And the last part will be from the onboarding will be the, the most custom things like creating apps, custom reporting, of course, you have the open API, open API as, as, as Danny said before, and Mio, and further training so that you can spread the knowledge inside your team and, and you uh, more, work more efficiently in, in, in with your customers, mm -hmm. of course. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. What what next? So after you master Dex, Dexma platform, we will try to help you after this journey, so ongoing with the product. And we are also continuously improving, and we plan to to make our ticketing system more uh, smarter uh, by uh, adding answer bots to the to the system that we currently have, which is really excellent. Uh, we plan also to to put inline help in in Dexma platform so that you have the right information at the right time in the right place. Uh, and we also uh, are planning to launch guided demos. Some of you are already aware of uh, guided demos and guided tools will will be uh, guided tutorials inside the, the platform so that you can learn step by step in app. Mm -hmm. This is the best way because to... Because sometimes now when you look at our demo at the moment, you see all of it there and it's it's nice to have a, a way to sort of step you through each of the the main parts and then go down into a bit more detail, I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a complex tool and it's 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 great to mm -hmm. have a, a first guidance when, when you are entering and onboarding. Mm -hmm. And one of the last initiatives that we are planning to to launch within the within the next months is the the partner scoring and the partner uh, benchmarking. We start a proof of concept with the partner challenge in June, which uh, was intended to see a gauge uh, of how well are you using the Dexma and how how proficient are you. And yeah, there's room to improvement indeed. So we. <laughs> We we know that that there are parts of the tool, new features that are not not well exploded, and mm -hmm. we we want to we want you to take the most of the of the platform. And something else we've I think had more initiative in doing this year as well is the monthly partner update emails, right? So yes. product updates, new kinds of things as well. Yeah, that kind of thing. So we would encourage all the partners who are on the to, call now yeah. to make sure you're signed up for the partner um, emails, so you get every month something about what bugs we might have fixed, what new features new we might features. have. Uh, and also, all thing. features that are useful and not yes, well and used. Yes, not well used. Yeah. Yes, we, we had a little spotlight on tags, for example, which yes. we found not a lot of people were using, but actually they have a lot of use within the platform in many different exactly. areas. Exactly, yeah. So the, the key here is always have a fluent communication with you mm -hmm. and, and to stay in touch with you, of mm -hmm. course. And last but not least, uh, yeah, that's your team. So the customer success team. We are not bots, but we are keen on relentlessly working for for solve your challenges. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. From well, I think Xavi, that that's one of our Dexmas differentiators, right? So the the number of people is working in the customer success team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really eager to to help our our customers in order to 
explain how others are doing, what what kind of tricks and tips you can you can do definitely to to do to do your project, right? Yeah, and and they're all engineers as well, right? Yeah, so, yeah. They so are, they, they all have a technical background. Well, so they all know well what they're talking about. And educated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You have it. Yeah. Disposal. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, I think that's the last mm -hmm. slide for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait. So now, now we've finished basically our, our major part of the presentation. We've actually received a lot of questions uh, from everyone here. Um, so we're going to take maybe 15 minutes or so um, to yeah to um, uh, to answer these these for you. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to turn on um, the the uh, video again. I'm just going to switch seats for a second. Okay, so um, let's take a look at some of these these questions. Um, maybe we can turn on our video as well. Yeah, sure. Yep, so Why that not? everybody can see I mean, see we are, us. we're here. We, we have Joan again. Mm -hmm. So he, he just came in yep, a few absolutely. seconds ago. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, so let's ah. turn on our video. Yeah, that's that one in there. Fantastic. So okay. now here, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Okay. So uh, one of the questions I had about Dexma Detect was um, we saw a lot of electricity data there and so forth. Yeah. Um, are we using it for other kinds of energy sources like we use in an in Dexma Analyze, for example? Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a good question, right? So we have started to to calculate our algorithms mainly based on electricity, mm -hmm. but people is asking for other sources. And I think that in the short term, we will add very, very quick the gas. Mm -hmm. And we are still thinking about others mm -hmm. right now. Right, but mm -hmm. electricity and gas will will be there in the in, in the coming months. Yeah, for sure. Okay, fantastic. So kind of the two key sources of energy, um, but we might be expanding later on too. Right. Fantastic. Um, okay, and um, someone else had a question about apps, for example. Um, how do they actually create an app? What's what resources are out there for them? What's the process? How, how does that work? Maybe you can help us there, Danny. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's it's really easy, actually, because we, we have our API published mm -hmm. and we as well have published a couple of projects with our own code. Yeah. So you can contact with a third party development company, explain your idea. They will propose you how to build that mm -hmm. or even Dexma can do that. Mm -hmm. And you can use our part of the code as a as a first stone into mm -hmm. your project, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the code can be done in any single language, mm -hmm. right? So Python or Java or whatever you want to use, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are just showing an iframe with your application behind. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't rely on a specific technology. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, really quick question for you. Uh, someone saw that we have uh, weather integration. Where does mm -hmm. that come from? Well, we have several several weather services mm -hmm. uh, integrated behind. Mm -hmm. This is the weather weather channel. We have as well uh, other several that I can remember actually, uh, whether it be that IO mm -hmm. can remember. Mm -hmm. So we, we are continuously integrating as gateways, you know, so we do integrate with different weather station services mm -hmm. uh, to give more coverage mm -hmm. through all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, another question was, what if I really don't like the Dexma branding? What if I want to have my own branding on top? <laughs> How do you we could, do that? You maybe, maybe ask that, yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Actually, that's something that is already prepared. So you can send us your branding materials so we can uh, change the uh, corporate colors, uh, logos, and, and brand uh, mm -hmm. our platform at your, yeah, uh, at your desire. And it's something we do for quite a lot of our partners. Yeah, actually, it? it's so quite quite usual. Just for, about all of our top partners will yeah, have their own branding. Or big I would customers say. always, yeah, require from from branding capabilities, of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so someone here is asking, so what if I have a whole lot of variables for a project? Um, it's not just energy, it's not just KWH, it's not just KVA. Um, how does Dexma handle that? So maybe Chubby or Danny, you could you could answer. Yeah. Yo, I have. Product master. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, we we have a list of 200 different parameters that you can monitor within the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that includes not just energies, but as well pressures, pump pressures, mm -hmm. inlet temperatures, outlet temperatures, uh, humidities. 
So we we can go through that list and we can actually send that list by by email. Yeah. And then of course, if you have specific variable that we are not having to that list, we just add it. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Um, on that kind of line as well, what about things like power quality, harmonics, power factor, and things like that? Can we also be monitoring those things? Of course, and, and I think that po power factor is there already, and, and I couldn't understand the other one. I think harmonics. Yeah, harmonics. Uh, harmonics, I think yeah. We have total yeah. harmonic yeah. Dust distortion. We have the yeah. THD, THI. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so, what about um, integrations? So we were talking about how we have 500 plus native integrations and things like this. Um, how about integrating older energy management devices? So not this kind of newfangled IoT type <laughs> the of older stuff, ones, right? the older <laughs> stuff. Uh, what have we done in that space? Well, what you need to, to have to be integrated is that that device can uh, send data mm -hmm. or at least can be interrogated by by third party to get that data right mm -hmm. uh, we we have found many all devices that you have to let's say upgrade them with mm -hmm. a with a network mm -hmm. a card mm -hmm. and then a gateway can push this information to the to the cloud mm -hmm. so it's there mm -hmm. right okay fantastic a uh, new question we've just got in, which um, I might pass over to Joanne, is what's the best way for an OEM who's interested in working with us? How would they go about that? Yeah, so uh, Dexma has relation with several OEM companies. Uh, typically, uh, we use the, the partner program, the platinum category. And in that case, we get, uh, we get further into the uh, adaptation or customization that we can do in the platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if it was mentioned this afternoon, but uh, Dexma through the API, uh, we can help to develop uh, ad hoc professional services, so mm -hmm. ad hoc features. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, I would say that among our 350 partners, 20 or 30 of them might be OEMs already. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. I think it's talking about us, learning more about our capacity, mm -hmm. uh, the capacities that we offer into the platinum category, mm -hmm. and, and that's it. Okay. On, on that topic as well, someone asked, what's our breakdown um, of partners, or sorry, of end customers uh, between commercial, industrial, that kind of thing? What's what's the breakdown, do you think? Yeah, I, I saw that one. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a question that we get a lot, uh, mm -hmm. especially uh, around industry, mm -hmm. uh, because some, somebody might say that our product is more intended to be for buildings and tertiary. Mm -hmm. uh, Industry represents 30% of the total end customers that we manage at That's Dexma. quite a lot, actually, yeah. <laughs> in comparison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so uh, someone here has a question more about control. So we know that's something that's more up and coming. It's not something that's ready on the platform right now. Um, but what will it look like? Is it just going to be like another BMS system? Is it a different type of interface? Maybe Danny, you can help us with that. Yeah. Our, our intention here is to make an abstraction of the hardware wall, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, we have to work with hardware despite we don't really like how hardware manufacturers develop their own software mm -hmm. so we try to make this abstraction mm -hmm. and to make it more use let's say more simple mm -hmm. for the end user to control right mm -hmm. so we'll be like putting a hardware in the middle or a software layer in the middle mm -hmm. and then making this abstraction so you have the same user interface for different different sites right mm -hmm. so then you can implement schedules and, and set points automatically to a set of your portfolio instead of going one by one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Let, let me add as well in the, in the control part that uh, of course it's in the roadmap of the company, uh, but of course there are already solutions who work pretty well in terms of uh, control frameworks uh, like, Niagara like Niagara or, or, yeah. or others that we have already integrated with Dexma. So we could say that already our partners or, or, or end customers who are attending this afternoon with us, they could use uh, Niagara or another BMS solution for the control sport and integrate it with the EMS, mm -hmm. which is Dexma. So we're not asking people to install a whole new BMS at, on no. the site if they already have one. We're trying to take the same approach as we have with Dexma Analyze and be hardware agnostic and be agnostic to the, the platforms that are already yeah, on site. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. 
Um, okay, um, we've had some questions about, uh, I think some people really liked the automatic baseline calculator and <laughs> the, the NZEV app. Um, so when do we think those will be available in production for everybody to use? Yeah. That's the big well, question, good question, I guess. Then. <laughs> Actually, uh, as, as Joanne explained before, we, we have done 79 releases during this year. Mm -hmm. So our software, it's continuously being improved, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so once we launch a feature, we we don't we didn't frozen it, mm -hmm. so we keep improving it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the ones that you want to have it in your in your deployment, I think that we could be installing it during this this week. The already. kinds of the kinds of beta yeah, exactly. types of, of of releases we've made. And yeah. and and we started going with that, mm -hmm. and then we keep iterating and making it better and better. Mm -hmm. So just just tell us. Okay, so for all those people who have written that, I think in the comments section, we'll get back to you to find out which of your deployments you might want to see it in. Um, and obviously, as part of that process, we love to get your feedback as well. That's the reason we put our beta releases out there to our partners, um, is so that we can understand how it works for you, how it doesn't work for you, how we can improve uh, and everything like that mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, moving on to the part that's maybe more in my area, which is about costs and how do we structure that. So there's somebody that asked, um, do we pay for the NILM and the Dexma Detect on top of what they already have? So to explain that maybe to some of the people on the call who uh, who aren't using Dexma at the moment, a lot of our existing partners have been using Dexma Analyze for many years now. Uh, Dexma Detect is, is somewhat newer and so may not be used as much across our partner network. Um, at the moment, um, we're pricing Dexma Detect separately to Dexma Analyze, so it's something you'll have to upgrade to. Um, it'll depend on the size of the project and how you want to use it, whether you already have Dexma Analyze and so forth. Um, as to what kind of form that will take. Uh, so those people who have, uh, who's, uh, sorry, who have <laughs> <laughs> been speaking too much today. So for those people who have been uh, asking about that on the chat here, um, I'll get in touch with you directly mm -hmm. and we'll see how we work that for sure. Um, uh, the same as well for those of you who want to try out Detect for the first time. Exactly. Um, yeah. We'll speak to you about how those projects are working, whether it's the right kind of platform for you um, and all of that sort of stuff. And another interesting question, Mio, that I see related to costs is mm -hmm. uh, Jan is asking this one. It says, what is the average extra cost for a customized app? Ah, Do you that's, know a, that's that a bit, one? <laughs> the average cost. I think that depends who's doing the customized app, mm -hmm. right? So some of our partners will have development teams in house. So obviously they've got that 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 cost absorbed within their their organisations. Those developers probably understand also very well what that partner organisation wants to achieve out of out of the new app. Um, alternatively, we have developed apps. For, for partners as well, but um, but we definitely encourage third parties to do this, or, or for partners to contract third parties to do this. Yeah, I think I think the the answer is that it varies so much that it depends on the complexity of the app. We've mm -hmm. developed apps, you know, in a couple of weeks and just put it out there, and and we've never touched it again because it's been sufficient for what people need. There are apps that we've developed for other partners that we've iterated again and again and again because the partners' needs yeah. have changed, or or because they see that you know the scalability things that we need to think about. Um, so come and talk to us for sure about what your needs for for apps are, and we'd definitely be happy to you know look at quotations and and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, there's a question here that says, does the platform include an action plan that can be filled with energy savings actions from the user? So this is kind of a little bit like we were talking about sending um, tickets and, and, mm -hmm. and things, have things been done? So uh, maybe Danny, you could answer that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far what includes Dexma, it's a feature where people can actually comment mm -hmm. on top of the charts, right? Mm -hmm. So if if you have detected a spike or you are doing some works in a specific parts of the building, then you can add commands. Mm -hmm. You can upload as well documentation. Yes, of course. And then we can integrate with other platforms that you may use internally within mm -hmm. your organization. So ticketing systems, ticketing facilities system, management exactly. systems, this kind of thing. So yeah. our intention is to build one thing and build it as better as we can mm -hmm. and then use the API to make other integration services. Okay, fantastic. Cool. 
another one very interesting from Nicolas. Uh, so he te he tells us uh, you've been speaking about sick folks, but what about Laura? Mm -hmm. Is it Laura integrated? Well, actually, one of uh, our uh, manufacturers w was was integrated with Laura as long as I know. Uh, I don't know. Actually, it's a customer. Yeah, from, from this Nicola. is <laughs> it's it's like funny story. So we we got actually an email from Laura. Saying that they integrated with Dexma. It was an, uh, it, it was a manufacturer of, of this Laura. Right. Yeah. So so we're that popular that even Laura wants to integrate with us. Is that well, what you're saying, Danny? You know, so that happens. <laughs> okay. So we, we can. Well, we we will stay in touch with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. We'll we'll get we'll in touch and see. Nicola. Yeah. So I think there's there's different flavors of Laura as well. Yeah. Actually, it's mm. not like through, right? exactly. It's, uh, yes. One one yeah. uh, network because uh, you have to build it on your yeah. own. But there are manufacturers yeah, that they sure. are implementing in already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we've got one minute to go. I think one last question mm -hmm. um, that we had. Uh, so is it possible with the automatic baseline calculator? So this is the new thing that that Alfonso showed us today. Um, is it possible to find a formula with heating degree days different from a weekend to a weekday? So can we use days of the week as a as a, um, a variable in this case? Well, that's a bit technical. Uh, it's not so it's it's not built to do that kind of simulations, mm -hmm. but of course it it could be improved. I mean, mm -hmm. if if there is that necessity from the market, and and you want to do that kind of of a specific calculation. Mm -hmm. Then it's a matter of just improving our our tool. But we do use days of the week separately. We do use as days of the week and heating degree days exactly. separately. Exactly, and right? and you can build a formula based on multiple heating degree days mm -hmm. inside the same formula. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, through the polypivot, mm -hmm. uh, let's say method. Okay, yep. we we yep. offer two methods: the monopivot, polypivot. Mm -hmm. Polypivot, but that's so yeah. technical for today. Uh, we we could probably make a webinar just on how to create baselines. Yeah, <laughs> that would be yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think exactly. that would be a good one to have. Um, okay, so it's now five o'clock our time. We've now been at this for two hours. So um, we thank. <laughs> Thanks for everybody. being there. <laughs> yes, we thank everybody for attending. We had a really great turnout today. Um, so, of course, feel free to get in touch with us, use my email address, a sales email address, um, get in touch with any of the people who have spoken today. We're more than happy to help you out. Um, we also are doing other webinars throughout the year as well on particular new um, features that we do or, or trending topics that we have in the industry too. So uh, watch out for those, watch out for your emails from our marketing team and they always love to hear from you as well. So thank you very much from the Dexma team and we hope you guys have a great day. Thank Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.